welcome back. Got lots of stuff to go through, so let's get started. Um, recently, I've been talking about Baja BC. I came across this concept that the Western Pacific has rotated uh, in this in this region, like here. But kind of this the central node is around Orofino. Interestingly, I don't remember exactly where. But, uh, this OF pole, if we look, it's a little south of the Oregon border, and then even a little further west. So if we just go ahead and put in the border a little south, and then a little further west, so it's like around, it's around the eyeball of the face. Around the, the yin yang looking thing, even even like the eyeballs are kind of yin yang esque. Okay, so anyway, I said, did someone say clockwise rotation? Which was in reference to, let me go through here real quick. Some arrows, I don't remember how to interpret this. I guess the angle and the strength, not sure. And then that one, this one was the one that was most, okay. This one those centers in Idaho. So that one centers. Somewhere over here, I guess. Let's see again. A little south again, but instead of west to east. So a little south and then east, so like here. Which if we remove this, around here. I don't know, I mean, there's a generally, like, s semi-circular structure here. It maybe has a nucleus opposite to the eye, or more over here, that led to different data. Like, different possibilities. That one's a little closer to the border. This is kind of circular, like maybe a, nucle a node nucleus type thing here. That rotation occurred around generally. And I said, did someone say rotation? Because I posted this GIF probably a hundred times before where there's a current coming down this way, interacting with flood basalts, which I've since realized uh, come out more over here than over here. I kind of interpret it as coming in, in this way and interacting with a current coming in this way, opposing one another, one another. But I don't think it's that simple. But effectively, they shape this region, is my interpretation. And they do do so in a way that induces these kind of vortices like there in this whole area where there's current going west, north, east, south, north, and then east, and then south, and then west, and then north. So there's like a clockwise rotation in the, that area. It's not the same time frame, but mind you, these processes are all related in the, the Earth's expansion process, which was also the global flood. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, then definitely see my previous videos, because obviously that doesn't match consensus. Pole of the third image far right is near Orofino, so I just kind of circled that. 
where, which is where the bend in the western Idaho shear zone happens. It comes up this way, and then it bends at Orofino, which is like over there. Okay, so there's that going on. Also from this video, I just posted a link. The Dr. Wells, Ray Wells states 50 MA, 50 million year old Siletz River volcanics are 70, 70 degrees east of present day expected geocentric axial dipole direction. And he says this, it happened to coincide with the magnetic pole from the Deccan traps which confused a lot of people. I didn't really look into that, but anything about the deck and traps and relating it to this area, I found worth noting at the very least. So that's, there's something going on there with those, some kind of interesting relationship, perhaps. Another lecture by Ray Wells with an interesting animation of proposed accretion of Silesia and, and the Yakutat as part of unrecognized older Yellowstone hotspot uh, track. So we can watch this one. I'll just mute that. Pardon me, sir. So he's showing the, the Silesia here forming along the Kula Farallon plate boundary which is in the plate tectonics framework, but regardless, just checking it out. There's the Yakutat terrain and then Silesia, around 50 million accretes onto Western North America, which apparently he depicts as having this kind of hole in it. Interesting. So let's keep that in mind, like, there being this actual inland along California, and then a s like sudden, suddenly this way in, into North America thing going on here. Yakutat then uh, accretes on as well at 50 million, but then uh, the the this terrain that Silesia is on starts to rotate so there's rotation going on here which is what i was just showing previously which then dislodges the yakutat terrain as part of the concept like it initially attached but then it uh or actually part of me the tillamook volcanic episode so there's a episode of volcanism in the Silesia, known as the tillamook that then, some reason, its effects propagate into Yakutat to dislodge it from Western North America, where it then goes north. And is brought up this way, over here, towards this arrow, in the direction of the arrow. And then, uh, mind you, all along, if we go back, Yellowstone hotspot. So Yellowstone hotspot hypo is hypothesized to have originated in the Silesia, or at least to have produced the Silesia and Yakutat terrains, which then accreted onto North America. And then the hotspot kept going this way and then he said something happened here I forget what it was some kind of volcanism or something and just basically then the Columbia River basalt happens as it passes at around 17 million and then this string of um, 
super volcanoes. And then it stops in present day, or is in the present day location, I guess. Not stops, but is in the present day location. And then he explains the like bend, so it's not going straight across. It's being bent down by the rotation. So it arcs. Even though it was straight across, it got bent by this rotation up here that then produces the track as we see it, which I think makes sense in terms of its general, that yes, the Yellowstone hotspot is involved in all of these things, basically. Regardless of the plate tectonics framework that it's in, Then I just kept going today. This was this was yesterday, I guess. And today I was like, you know, has North America? I was looking into North America, North American rotation as a whole, but it's kind of hard to find things like specific like that because it and yeah, generic terms like North America rotation geology like <laughs> what do i add to but like not remove things that are important so i just ended up finding a lot of more generic things that led me down a path of looking into rotation that i thought was pretty interesting so mind you this area is rotating let's go back to the map everything so like down to the Nevada border is rotating. It's not just rotating, it's rotating clockwise. Like this image. Clockwise. Then I came across this paper, which I link in the next post, and I'll link all these Twitter threads that I'm going to go through, um, where it shows counterclockwise black rotation in North Nevada. So like to the south, so here's clockwise rotation and then counterclockwise rotation in North Nevada. And then uh, like, I didn't even... Uh, Thing to post this on my Twitter at that point until I saw this paper, which then says um, clockwise rotation of the western Mojave Desert, which is why I posted this. Here's the Mojave Desert in southern Nevada and into California, down to basically just past the end of Nevada, so like down here. In, in this region. So we got clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise. I'm like, hmm. Hmm. A lot like currents in the ocean, just larger scale. Remnants of what once was, that, like motion that's still occurring, but it's occurring off on such a subtle scale that it looks like it's happening across millions of years now in truth when when it was really happening the rotation was actually happening it was during the flood but the it's slowed down so much it's kind of like a bottle that's really like got a really large amount of water inside of it and then a gushing holes open so it all starts to drain but then it, the pressure from above slows down the actual outflow to a trickle because the hole's not big enough. So then it just looks like it, like if we measure based on the trickle, like millions of years have occurred, not just in, um, the way deserts are rotating, but in the way atoms are decaying. 
Then I saw, I just kept scrolling down, like, what else is in this Google result? Before I even did a scholar search. And then I came across Cenozoic Age counterclockwise rotation in northwest end of Sierra Pampeñas in Argentina. So Argentina, I mean, up here is where the angel's trident is influencing. The what? The what? what? Where Baja BC is being accreted because of the current flows that are swirling in this location, which is then inducing a jet stream upward and southward, so north and south, but this location is actually here, over here. It's a little off, but actually over there. It's right there with the jet stream going up that way. So this jet stream's going up this way. Through Baja, California. Where it's bringing materials from this region and lodging them up here. Which then have paleomagnetic data indicating that something is awry. As well as all this other data. That's just not really explainable. I was thinking, so maybe these bends, like the way it goes up and around, not here, not in this map, but in that other map in the video I played, where it had Celestia docking over here and Yakutad moving up north to up here. Like, I've been kind of contemplating ways in which this jet stream from down here that's a trident that has all the currents off to the side as well, which we can't really see in that image very well, but... But here, we can see them, like, here. Here. They look just like fracture zones because they're the same things it's just they started over from this location as a current flow that then propagated this way up to the nose of the mid pacific mountains from over here just to the right of fiji up through this stretch is the center one that goes up to here But then they bend off and go this way. So I was thinking before the Pacific moved, when it was still more like this, uh, underneath North America, literally, at a lower depth than the rest of the underplating that makes up the magnetic anomaly map of the, the layers, physically below it, it slid out. just thinking yeah like Mexico was probably there so some layers below Mexico were there Florida was probably there so some layers below Florida was probably there so there's probably all the way down to the magnetic anomaly map that we see right here atop what we see here And this slid out from under it, as, attached to Asia. Slid out, though. And the space between got filled with other currents. But initially, like, this was flowing up through here. <clears throat> and then it started to bend as the Western Pacific opened, because these are actually older than it is dated here. <clears throat> Like this, even though if we look at the oceanic crustal age, 
Like, this region is the oldest on this map. That's not actually what data of drilling samples shows, it's just what magnetic and anomaly interpretation led to the inference of. It's not actually based in data, it, it's based in indirect data, based on just dating of these that is just extended into here and therefore in here is actually older than this one and these are younger out here so it must be older in here and I mean there's some evidence but it seems like a lot of this might have just formed after this as it opened like it started to form say two two threads half of the top and bottom like a portion of it and then some other current started to go between them and while it was forming a wider thread so like this portion started to form at some point to open them up but before it formed it kept going upward and maybe just more straight through these So it was going more just up. <clears throat> While this was happening, which started in the Cretaceous, like this wasn't going the whole Earth's expansion process. This is just really when the Earth was approaching its uh, point when all the continents would break apart. At 66 million, 65 million at the KT boundary. Which is what that actually is. But approaching it, this was happening. So, yeah. Just to kind of put us in the framework, let's get back to this. So it was putting current down this way as like a flame structure out of, it, out of the base. Like out down this way and down this way. Creating... A jet stream out here as well like counter to this one but just different one was a thin narrow thread that branched out the other was branched out and kind of like reached a focal point and then it fanned out but like had a focal point that current went down over here and flowed into South America to participate in the spreading apart of the continents while it pushed North America northward away from South America. So it basically put two arms out, a dominant and a recessive arm in a way, and shoved against the two continents with a um, position, like a balance point here that then moved out to Galapagos as the hotspot but also moved all the way over here, which was over there, at the time when this was happening, until it opened up and spread apart, but then the, the underplating is over here, it's not visible over here, this is what we see over here, leaving behind a hot spot here, that still points up through at Baja, California, and along the same path, it's just North America moved away. Like if we point down from Baja, down through the Gulf, it basically goes to Galapagos, is what I'm saying. For a reason. So like things like that matter. And I'm going to go through some other things and some other posts that relate to things of that nature. That really, maybe you'll see what I'm saying, or maybe you'll just be like, alright. But... Okay, so Andean counterclockwise rotation of about 37 degrees in the north, and a clockwise rotation of about 29 degrees in the south. I don't know the full extent of where they're referring to. Like, North Andes, South Andes? I don't know. But 
But yeah, so there's some rotation down there. In essence. To move along. <laughs> then the large Colorado Plateau rotation. Or large Colorado Plateau rotation, which is over here. So we had rotation clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, like gears, clockwise, and then if I continue, instead of staying on this circle, I go down, counterclockwise, and then instead of staying on this circle, I go down, clockwise. So let's see what... What's up here? Mind you, these are not the same time. This, what I'm about to read is late Triassic. Or post Triassic. And it says Cenozoic opening of the Rio Grande rift. So it may be in the Cenozoic as well. I'm not completely sure. Uh, North American poles at the time that these rocks formed can be closely reconciled because they're off. They're not actually where they should be from the rocks. Um, by a 13.5 degree plus or minus 3.5 degree correction for accumulated post-Triassic clockwise rotation of the Colorado Plateau associated with Laramide deformation and the Cenozoic opening of the Rio Grande Rift. So clockwise rotation here so we have clockwise counterclockwise which maybe feeds into this clockwise like this counterclockwise around nevada maybe has like a connection into there for clockwise rotation Which is interesting, like if you imagine something spiraling with a tail clockwise, like its tail is going to follow it on the outside clockwise. So like the ammonite's final chamber structure here. is in the position of a clockwise rotation, I would say. Like a winding, clockwise winding. But so, a flow here generally counterclockwise, feeding maybe specifically through the area of the Grand Canyon, like a way back when before it formed though. Like, because it formed by waters flowing out of the area. But when pressures were maybe, like, pushing it in, it went that way instead. Or they just changed directions when it was uh, draining. Which maybe contributed to a clockwise rotation. And then uh, down here, there is a clockwise rotation. which should run into resistance. Like, this is turning into the one turning clockwise over here, the Nahave Desert. Desert. So it's flowing into resistance, so maybe, like, there's some relationship to why this area is more mountainous. Like, if this is going clockwise and this is going counter counterclockwise like maybe over past here it starts to go up this way and back around wherever the boundary is I'm just kind of seeing bend that way so maybe there's some kind of thing like that but some of it gets in here flows in that way. I'm just thinking, and then it goes this way. Kind of runs into it, like at a right angle though, where it bends off of it while this runs directly into it. 
So like at the right angle area maybe it kind of compacted this while at just before the right angle it carved this kind of like opposites at the entry point between the two vortices of a counterclockwise of one up here adjacent this clockwise one while over here there's a more of a just a mountainous boundary I mean, it kind of makes sense. I don't want to say that's like totally what's happening. I would like to find here, like there seems to be uh, some kind of structure here. So based off of that, this is going this way. So this should be going clockwise. Or counterclockwise. I mean, this one's going clockwise. and can feed through the same area. Maybe even cut through here and go up that way. Like a smaller energy flow though, like an all that's kind of wrapping around with the clockwise motion, but drawn in this way. But then it runs into this larger vortex that kind of just shoves it through past some protection wedge that got compressed here specifically. But clockwise, so I mean this should be counterclockwise generally here. Like right here. A generally counterclockwise rotation. So let's pull up our uh, no. Just to kind of picture, visualize what I'm, kinda, what I'm talking about. Like an overall current goes this way, but then it forms like eddies along its path. like this even where there's let's see this goes this way runs into this one bends this way runs into it again bends this way goes up here goes this way so it kind of just flows from here also from this one by going around it this way running into there and going right so like there's some connection from this one over here this flows over then over and over so that a, a actual flow is going both ways actually because it's going this way or um, i guess this one not so much but down here over up over it's kind of more so going left to right though which is in line with the actual ocean current. So some of them are coming back, but they're just running into resistance where they can't really form chains of eddies. So like over here, there's a chain of eddies. because there's a current flow. I feel like I got a hair in my mouth. <laughs> current flow going this way. So like this, even though there's a current flow going this way, maybe this one, or this one's going counterclockwise. So let's say a current flow is going this way. I drew this spinning almost out that arrow venting out at least. So this should go in, this red one, but with some like venting path, I guess. But this orange, like it kind of makes sense. There's a, there's a bottleneck here, like generally between Baja, California and the mountains that end up forming by other pressures over here. Also the, another larger eddy on the Hudson Bay 
that's applying just pressure over to this region of, of water that's physically above the surface and essentially wanting to go to a lower energy level. So it's kind of flowing towards the newly forming ocean as well as the newly forming lower level terrains. So basically the boundary of Laurentia. So it's just holding this pressure here while these other currents are running into it so that end up going up this way. From over here though, like it bends this way, runs into all the pressure over here and just bends off it this way as well as bending the other way. But there's so much pressure over here that it does that, it bends off of it, flows up this way. But it doesn't just flow as a continuous path to do this, to make this purple region. It physically flows up and runs into resistance here. So then it forms a spiral off of it, I guess, which then encourages it maybe more to this side than over here it goes clockwise which then encourages it to the right side or then goes counterclockwise and maybe goes clockwise over at the Bonville area over here so like it goes along this way I guess another bottleneck similar to down here right here where it goes this way counterclockwise and then clockwise and then counterclockwise but then clockwise off of it here as like a just a holding the pressure the space over here by another eddy because the one coming this way couldn't form just like a big enough uh, eddy to occupy the space or maybe it did this later, like initially it was much closer, but extension and things started to make it so it couldn't, because this, this physically is more compacted and then it kind of sags out to a more e equilibrium state. So maybe uh, there's something related to that in this, like not having as much water occupying it. So it, uh, branches off into a newly circulating system maybe but goes up here goes counterclockwise at this nose because it can't get through so it goes it basically gets reflected goes back but it's in this overall current so it gets reflected back in spirals and just does that and then goes counterclockwise until it gets up here where it goes clockwise generally and then runs into this other current coming down this way, which goes along this way and down here and down here and swirls in here, which I have like this. So like this region we're talking about now but over here, there's just a bunch of stuff going on, including this current that flows from the closing of Baja California material onto accretion onto North America that closes an ocean current that ends up flowing this way along the pressure and between the pressure over here and the pressure over here down this pathway. So it then creates the Rockies and participates in the Rio Grande Rift, which is like right over here somewhere. And then it gets down past this like point where this is coming in and bending and swirls just past it. 
like a cross current location and swirls in until it basically produces Chicxulub as well as continues off over this way, over this way really participating in the severing of the earth so that it could expand and then uh, continues into South America like this where it interacts with current off of Africa which then goes back to Africa here's some currents in Asia and Europe so then goes back to Africa and swirls against currents over there past Africa in Asia and Europe that are interacting like the there so I think that kind of makes sense Let's go back real quick to this. This is clockwise, so imagine a current's going this way. So it's kind of encouraging. It's It really has a boundary out here that it's ultimately held to. That then goes all the way over here into this region of the Ammonite structure of the Colorado Plateau. So it is providing a push in this direction. But there's resistance over here. For some particular reason, like it divides, goes over here, produces an eddy here instead. Like going in towards, I wonder if this is like, if I go like this, and say at the beginning of this river right here, and then I just go to, to Hudson Bay, to like there, to this nucleus looking thing. Like it's almost, the reason I would do that is because it's almost like it's at a right angle from it. Like it goes over, but then it, pushes into the pressure this way like there's there's an eddy over here centered on the Hudson Bay though that is then applying a pressure that's kind of at different angles from its like central point and it bends specifically at a at the 90 degree mark where it's able to like put up uh, the most direct resistance. It bends exactly where the resistance is direct. But then the resistance from that causes it to bend back. So it kind of spirals here and just creates like a a uh, kind of um, it's reminiscent of over here where the mantle puncture hole is. If current flows out of the mantle puncture hole and goes west along this blue path, but then there's this other current of itself really coming back, coming back this way that flows down at the mantle puncture hole from over here. Yeah, at it. So it divides around it and creates an eddy over here, goes this way, then another eddy over there. But uh, this current then ends up having like this gasket type thing here that then current like flows out this way but it creates like a boundary region a cushion if you will for this current coming in hitting this current like a cushion region that forms be between them 
that then separates them in more real ways so that they're not as directly hitting one another. But doing it, perhaps, like, specifically at this one's right angle, like this pressure's coming in here. This current's just hanging out going this way. But then it goes this way at this point. This probably was trying to go more direct. Maybe it was initially going more directly that way. Wonder, does that, like up here? I always kind of wondered what this is about, because it's just kind of in the way. Like, I thought this goes and bends around here, but it doesn't quite take this shape. Maybe, maybe it actually was an initial path that the current flowed, like, out of width here through, like, basically this, this far down from the mantle puncture hole flowing this way to a width of this blue line. But then, like, the same upward to in line with this one maybe so that initially it forms like a big col conduit like here that fans out a bit like a wave but it kind of re resembles that is what I was thinking this bending or right, this 90 degree ish relationship where it bends at the direction of the Hudson Bay at least. Cause like over here, if it bent like over here, it's just not 90 degrees. It might be more so 90 degrees, even further, like over here. Though, in reality, like here to Hudson Bay, but it does bend towards the Hudson Bay, so maybe it's got like a slightly before, kind of like a just before reaching the exact number, the exact. 90 degrees it has like a moment where it is, needs to get off the ride kind of thing it's getting more and more necessary for a current to go in opposition to keep going without like flowing over here but there's pressure over here with the sierra nevadas that kind of force the water down this channel I think it's something like that though. So if this is going counterclockwise, clock, this would have to be going counterclockwise. So maybe there's one like here that's going generally clockwise. Like it goes in this way, bends off that way, but also maybe does a little bit of this. leads to like a wave really some more rotation in the Caribbean plate area let's see Complex volcanic tectonic geology south of the main boundary faults may be explained by interaction rotation of crustal blocks in the overriding Caribbean plate above the magma production zone along the downgoing coast coast cocos cocos slab. So this is in the area of Honduras and Guatemala and Nicaragua. 
Mexico, I guess. In this area. This might be a little far. There's generally a current going this way. But there's... What I thought most interesting about this is the realization that there might be... I might be putting too much... I kind of figured all along these were just part of one unit, but maybe it was accreted substantially, like from this whole region. I don't know what to make of it without looking into it way more than I know about this area. Then there'd be a clockwise, counterclockwise. So like these two are able to feed into each other, but also like resist each other. Coming counterclockwise this way and then clockwise this way. Let's go to animations. Imagine clockwise rotation here. Counterclockwise here. Maybe it like got over and made a spiral here too. This is where this bottleneck happens too. Like if there's a current going up this way between the islands that were adjacent and a current going up this way and a larger current going up this way but the larger current runs into this bottleneck and does this thing. I mean that would kind of force pressure this way generally because it's bottlenecking. So like, it starts to swirl counterclockwise, which includes a force to the side. So it's possible it would uh, have flowed over. So maybe a current was going down this way. in opposition, like opposite to a current going this way. I'm still not completely sure what's going on in the exact mechanism that's going on here, but maybe there's a current flowing down this way because like it, if there's a pressure this way and it gets over, but it runs into that more stronger current then it kind of gets deflected off and creates this nook maybe. And then anything that gets past it it's over here. Maybe spirals this way then. Like it's past it. Spirals around. Like... It's going this way. Like that makes more sense. I don't know why I would have this linear thing form in the end. Spirals counterclockwise, some of it going this way as well. Maybe even going out across here into Australia. Maybe flowing up into a current coming down this way. And like 
going off it over here. I don't know. Or maybe meet, we're meeting like a more balanced, a balance point where the pressure from over there is not as, is a, almost at equilibrium with the overall pressure over here. So it kind of balloons out to the sides, making this mirrored aspect of California and to the West Sea and North Malaku and the basins and so on that I show in this one. <sighs> don't mind the current flows, I don't really know. Although they kind of point to a potential in terms of, like if a current's coming down this way, and a current's coming up this way, that gets f forced over here, generally, then maybe this other current would be forced inward and fill in this area more. Look at the map. Probably through the San Francisco Bay, really, region, like through it. Fill this region. Which just runs into this batholith. Goes this way. Fills the whole thing, goes this way creating like a secondary lobe like there's a a oval eye shape here with a with a pupil and then an elongated structure right here and then really another one down here probably but really dividing near San Francisco Bay so that's probably where I came in maybe try to come in here somewhat or drained out here it looks like by that i don't know exactly hmm this balance point almost makes me think of some method of transporting, like holding a terrain and moving it. Like the actual, in the meantime, like chunks of Baja BC, or Baja California, that are, will become Baja BC chunks, get like pulled off, brought off of the... Interactions, which then kind of get lodged in this line, this like cart of a one current coming one way across here. Probably, probably related to the closure. Like as this stuff goes up here, it physically blocks this current that's flowing down this way. That probably went over along this this region at that point. But then this material just continues to make it up there it's still in the like imbalance of currents is because this is like a jet stream that's just bringing enough energy to overwhelm the flow back the other way so it actually accretes the material while there's like a space between and it just transports it and then lodges it all up there from different locations along the way. <sighs> Maybe. That kind of makes sense to me, honestly. It breaks off. It takes off enough material that then it gets caught in the balance between the currents. So then move up the current the coast as the one down here starts to get more potent, more energetic. Just 
driving from that angel, just driving structures north enough to actually lodge them in place and like seal the process. And then the water that was flowing this way, like it's still in a current, so it keeps flowing through along this path and goes this way over across here, try, essentially like looking for another path. But then it makes it all the way over here where it joins the rest over here, as well as the pressure this way which then swirls it inward to explode, pretty much. <clears throat> like a super spiraling inward till a water nucleus supernova thing happens. I'm not sure exactly why. I guess the eddy itself is so much of a whirlwind that it actually creates like a starts to like bounce the water enough in turbulence to just at some point smack downward and then make space because there's just too much water because it was a global flood the water had nowhere to go on the surface so it literally did that in the high energy environment it was in. Like, not just by because it had nowhere to go, but the high energy environment was driving it to have nowhere to go until it expanded the Earth. Like, helped cut the continents apart and shape them. Okay, so let's keep going. This one is actually about Alaska. Evidence in support of the hypothesis of anti-clockwise rotation of northern Alaska. <clears throat> the most popular hypothesis for the origin of the Amer um, Asian Basin, which is over here. Here's Alaska, here's Russia. So like over here, possibly this whole thing. That's, that's actually, I didn't even bother to look. Amer Asian Basin. Let's see what constitutes that. I guess up to the North T Terminal and up to that ridge. And then there's the Eurasian Basin. So this region, a Asian Basin. So over here is rotating and over here is rotating. According to this, so let's read it. Um, Mare Asian Basin of the Arctic Ocean is that it formed by the anti-clockwise rotation of northern Alaska and adjacent northeast eastern Siberia away from the Canadian Arctic Islands in the Cretaceous time. Both of them anti-clockwise. Northern Alaska anti-clockwise. And northern Siberia. Or over, over here somewhere. Not sure exactly. <clears throat> but if this is rotating this way, then it has a force applied this way. Or more like towards a central point. Like, like these two. This is clockwise. This is clockwise between them is this balance point where they're colliding. It's going up and in, but this is going down and in also towards the other one. So it goes up where this one goes down and in and collides. So they re re they repel one another, push space apart basically as a result is what I'm getting at. So this is physically a mechanism Notice the difference. Clockwise adjacent to clockwise repulsion. Over here, though, we have 
counterclockwise, seemingly clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise. So there's a connection that they're all one current, pretty much. They're connected. But over here, they're repelling. They're not actually conjoined as a single system. They're repelling one another. So this participates, I would say, the eddies. In the opening of this basin, Overall, the available geological and geophysical evidence data support the anti-clockwise rotation model. Is this still going? Oh, hey. Okay, let's do that one, sure. So there's that. And then I've put <coughs> notice an or anti-clockwise or I guess I did that opposite, but anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise, same difference, they're still colliding, just from different directions. Maybe it points to like their motions. They're trying to go, uh, Spinning, maybe one atop and one below the other, kind of physically. I don't know. <laughs> that probably didn't make sense, but... There's the North Terminal, though, which... Very interesting. North Alaska and East, East Siberian both are said to have had counterclockwise rotation. Like they were splitting energetically, involved in the opening of the... Amer Asian Basin, which is the region around the north. Why I have this picture is the region around the northern ter terminal of the magnetic anomaly map. And then the shallogram, because this is what's happening, is it's form it formed a terminal, which and then it opened a basin. Notice the spirals going out from it, too. Maybe... This is some collision point right here. Where it, it always has this little indentation, or protrusion, I guess. Like a tab something and I mean I kind of look at it a lot I don't know what to make of it I kind of thought it was like the last thing to not yet happen or something like over here it would have it did my thought was it did have this tab thing like over here but then it went through more stages or say over here it went through more stages to just move it out further but it could then like cut out another tab like right over here like etch out a little bit but then make a tab and then kind of smooth out the rest to make it have a, like the tab move and then the tab move again and the tab move again and just spiral out doing something like that and maybe I'm producing a more traditional looking ammonite But it didn't occur to me that there would be an actual collision point where there's like a resistance leading to like a boundary between them. Seems beyond that, I don't know. And then there's the source for that last one. Then there were differential rotations in Tibet it seems, which are over here over in this region, actually, I think. Like over here somewhere. I just noted it. Let's, let's move past it pretty quick. They're, they're over there. T 
to the east of India, just north of this, yeah, so like here. I guess that there's a current going out this way, and there's a current going this way. So maybe there'd be a lot of clockwise rotation, is that what this is? Clockwise on this side. Counterclockwise, clockwise, I'm not sure. Differential rotations are different, like it's a lot of the smaller systems like doing like this. Where they're going counterclockwise, clockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counter, 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 clockwise. Then another west central Nevada counterclockwise. So this one restated what we were already saw, but I kind of just forgot that this paper was further on of just like a counterclockwise in this region, wherever exactly. And then the clockwise here. So it would be nice to find a counterclockwise here, but it would also be like a prediction. Like even though the data probably all already exists, I don't have it. It hasn't been applied. We don't necessarily need like new observations to apply it to a model if the model is not just like the dominant consensus that is just taken for granted at this point. Like new models could all be applied to the old data when the subtleties. ironed out but we just do it to the consensus and even that is just a piecemeal in terms of no one actually does it to, to the totality of the consensus it's just we as a collective kind of without really anyone doing it we all do it but then no one's doing it <laughs> because it's like literally no one's doing it it's just all everyone's doing part of it <laughs> but that's not the same as anyone doing it so uh, in terms of just applying the data accounting for the data and putting it into a model so uh, yeah anyway it just leaves the errors when we do it that way that's the problem I, I get why we would do that obviously but it just leads to unrecognized errors but so does doing a theory as an individual. That's why like theories need groups of people to participate to really get see their actual potential. Like it's not really able to be realized by an individual when there's there is that much data. So like <sighs> But if it's true, it's true, and it should match the data, so the more people investigating something that maybe is actually true, the more we can realize it matches the data to a point where then, like, truth can be known, potentially, like, if it's actually true. If it's actually true, then truth can be known. If people are recognizing something that is true and then investigating it further to further validate it by re- just looking at old data because it's all out there already sure there's new data but there's old data and to only look at new data is like such a small spectrum of reality counterclockwise motion uh, rotation is a characteristic fe feature of the results of most paleomagnetic studies of the Pontides and Anatolides of central Turkey. An average counterclockwise rotation of 33 degrees is identified across a region extending from 34 degrees to 38 degrees east longitude. It seems probable that this rotated domain extends as far west as the Eigen Graben system of western Turkey and as far south as the Taurides. So here's the Eigen Graben, uh, here's the Taurides. 
So I guess whatever 30, 38 is. Said 38 east is pretty far. It's like over here. Right there. And 34. 34, interestingly, does approach this. It's not to it, which would make sense if this is kind of like a rotational axis where it's not rotating as much as elsewhere. Like we'd recognize more rotation out of the exterior if it's physically rotating in this region. But the rotation is counterclockwise. And mind you, this is a current flow map I drew um, at some point on like episode 307 range, something in the Damodar Coon. I was looking in from there to Asia and then to Europe and then this happened. And I'm, I feel pretty good about it. But I, I drew clockwise of water flows, mind you. Hmm. I don't think it could be wrong, though, unless unless this is going out and going the opposite way. This current, like, going past this, and not just going down this way, but also, like, pushing this current upward so that it comes in, like, from a certain region only, and then it passes over here and goes and does the opposite and then holds the general boundary this way instead of this purple current being this way because I just kind of drew that conclusion that it could definitely be parts of this are wrong. I guess that could be wrong and be, could be that red current and that could be pointing me to that it was that red current. Honestly, now I think about it, I know uh, Turkey in general is a lot of like accreted material at di different layers, like the these ones. Like these came in waves. Maybe this could be related to the Mediterranean being formed even. So that it like brought material with it, including from Greece, and deposited it, deposited it over here. But in a, I mean, if it goes across here, this is going down. Rotates. Um. Around. I even drew this purple one going this way. I guess, like, there is this here. Maybe it gets past this current that goes across this way and then kind of pushes out a boundary like in the, like in Colorado Plateau, it pushes out a boundary and then continues over here and also this way. There's also a spiral over here for sure, several. So then there's a... Uh, so I said inverse of what I concluded flood current pass to be, but then I, I was thinking maybe it's it could uh, like kind of like when you see wheels spinning, 
Sometimes they look like they're spinning in the reverse direction depending on like their spin rate. Etc. Like maybe maybe something like that could be happening here and it really is a current from over here. I mean this really takes a current from over here, but it could be this other purple one. Like deflecting through here, coming through here and deflecting that way without actually being a current coming through here. I'll have to think about it, look into it some more at some point, or maybe someone else can. <laughs> Someday, I don't know if it's that big a deal. It's almost like, okay, if, it, if it's wrong, if this is wrong, it points to that it's actually going from this red current over and I misjudged the red current pretty much as being like this limited to here, really some up there and then going under, under this other current through here and then out over here, not realizing it also went further north to up here even. Let's just take a gander to the east. Like if it's flowing this way. There's a current, what I've been saying, I mean almost, this is guaranteed. There's a current coming into Damodar Kun region right here. Passing through the mountains, creating Damodar Kun. So for sure there's a current generally going this way and running into resistance, so it's going out this way. Then it's got this right angle, like Hershey Kiss thing here. So on, honestly, it almost points to that this current actually goes through to this region, but like down under this, where this current bends and bends and goes, splits off to that way, and goes up this way, above, like this stretch, generally, like the bulk of the current, to then flow through here, and then get in here and interact with it, and in here, and go across that way, but, Cross the current because there's pressure up here too of another current going across this way. I closed it, but another current going across this way off of North America. So I can't really go up that way, it would like to, but instead it has to cut across. So it cuts across like past this general resistance area, maybe even participating in the process again for the formation and gets across but it forms this eddy to do so and then gets across here where then it's flowing with the water which helps like bridge the connection across like this again where it gets across joins this current, generally speaking, but crosses this current, creating an eddy. I'd say so. Okay, we're good. It's totally possible it goes the other way, so we're good. I was a little concerned that uh, initially I was like, maybe it physically was moving the other way like that maybe that points to that wherever water is forming an eddy the earth itself underneath it is spiraling the other way but i was thinking like that just from a stand just like a push standpoint like there's a current flowing in this direction the earth like it gouges into it at all it pushes so it should physically if it's swirling it should push the earth in a swirl too that's in the same direction so it kind of almost almost points to 
what direction the currents were flowing on the Earth during the flood, where there's rotation everywhere, because it seems like there's rotation everywhere on this globe, probably. Globe! I knew it! I knew it! <laughs> Sorry, Flat Earthers. Love you. Much love, much love. I see you guys doing whatever you're doing. I don't know what to think of it. I'm just like... You know, about all this. <laughs> you know, what about all this? I don't know, maybe. Maybe that'll be interesting. It's an hour and 25, huh? I might just pump out like three of these right quick. I could stop. I mean, that's... So that was the rotation one. But I have several threads still. And other things. Let me just look at them. Sorry if that was too revealing. Oh no, that looked cool. Well, okay. None of that was like immediately applicable to the rotation concept. Although maybe this one. Let's go through this one real quick. Thinking about fracture zones. And their relationship to the mantle puncture hole in the Pacific, like spokes radiating out from it, and figured maybe it was causing current flows that reached into the Atlantic and Indian Ocean that then go back to the puncture hole. So, here's the mantle puncture hole. If we go down, we see fracture zones that are bending towards it. That's weird. Why are they bending towards it? towards this bending towards it and then over here they're just kind of going up like but once once we pass it so imagine there's a current that physically goes out this way and then goes to the right this way and makes its way somehow all the way over here too so it's influencing these regions and then it makes it through like the whole globe and then it starts going up over here though so I was looking at the actual pass like over here like for instance this goes across and these kind of level out along this line these several balance out across this line mantle puncture hole like, it's kind of related looking. This goes like it's pointing up a little bit more than these. So it's almost like over here it's trying to have the path. So it kind of does it, forces it near the end where they're able to. Even though over here they're not really... I mean, maybe they're pointing at it. I don't think they're pointing at it though. They're pointing like this way. But then down here, they start to bend up, like, so this image. I thought, what if I just do it like this? Like, these lines, like, down here, they bend. There's a different angle. Like, they're bending towards the mantle puncture hole, which is right there. But initially, they're not going in that direction, but they bend towards it. So I was thinking down here it was doing the same, but then it bent towards it along this path. So I just said, if I draw a line from here to the mantle puncture hole, does that follow this edge? And it doesn't really. It doesn't really. But, it occurred to me, you know, there's a sharp point right here, there's this thing that is, what if, so I said, what if, I go like this, start again right over here, and then I zoom out, go over to the edge of this, like around here, I guess. And then I go over to the mantle puncture hole, like right 
there. Now what's it look like? It's much more in line with this. It's a little offline still. So if I move it so it's even more online. Like actually at the boundary of the water. It does go through this point a little better than if I have it like there. So it's almost like some uh, spoke that went through this, some current that went this way, but then bent up this way along a boundary that formed, went up this way, but it it couldn't go directly at the mantle puncture hole because whatever was going on at the nucleus of this kind of prevented a flow directly there, so it went around it. And then I went directly to it, but in so doing, it kind of, like, physically held the structure more solid. So it has this peninsula going out here. So current didn't just go across here and sever. Like, in a straight path, it bent where this goes. And then once it passes it, it just kept going. Like, the path is... <clears throat> the path for this connection from the Mediterranean through the Red Sea to the Indian Ocean has this bend in it, which... So I was thinking maybe that's legit. Like, there might be something to that. So I, this is it, not quite... Having, having a gap over here, going not through this... Not through, like, a pretty point... And then not going through a pretty point. <clears throat> and then this is just me drawing the bend. <clears throat> I guess bending towards over here too. Like it goes this way and then it bends. <clears throat> and then more towards. <clears throat> and then it's just going towards it at this point. That's kind of what I was saying. And then similarly, it's doing that over here, and then it passes branches, like, as it passes the mantle puncture hole here, this overall crack in the earth, the mid-ocean ridge in the southern Indian Ocean. As it approaches, it branches off this way and down this way. So there's this branching here and here. Let's see what this is. 20 or 70 degrees east. <clears throat> I don't know if it would be exact, but 70 degrees east. As soon as it gets past it, it has two options. It either joins it, or it flows past it, I guess. Like it, at that point, it's too late. It has to continue along the path. So it goes, it branches off, separates into two currents. One that goes between Antarctica and Australia. But the other goes up this way, towards the mantle puncture hole. But then it bends off of its pressure overall, I guess, and cuts across here where it, this is going this way. Like it connects over to this region by having like a off center approach, like not approaching it. Neither of them approach one another. There's this region that seems related to like this because this wall maybe maybe encouraged a bit more along this conduit uh, below the crust I believe but underneath it enough to protect this structure as well as to create this imbalance like 
So this is the reason I thought this was kind of related is this is like a rotating center, like a nucleus, kind of like those eddies. Notice the this itself is an eddy. This is an eddy around it, like in the magnetic anomaly map here. Then this reaches a region of resistance, I said. Region of resistance. Almost like by passing the mantle puncture hole, it uh, starts to encounter currents going the other way, approaching the mantle puncture hole. And they interact in more of like a flat face region that's much more le sheeted layers because there's a current from above or above and current from below. Maybe not equal, equal but opposite. Like this is uh, more just overall currents, I suspect maybe. Than the jet streams, which are going eastward at that point. This overall current, I guess, is going westward, similar to how undercurrents go east and westward in a bulk current, overall current, and then go eastward in the narrow jet from the mantle puncture hole itself. See my Earth's undercurrents video. In a similar way, the opposite, but opposite, the, they're approaching this way and this way. Then I guess the uh, jets are coming through here, though. Trying to go up there, but then bending off by the pressures, maybe. And merging into this region for some reason. Holding this boundary to help, like, allow the current flow going eastward. Definitely that, but I don't know why exactly. But then there's like a spinning top thing. There's one of these bonds breaking like we were talking about over here, like this, this, then there's this one, then there's this one. But then on the opposite side of Australia, Like here, right here, kind of looks like something. I mean, it doesn't have the totality of the of a circle in a similar way. I was just thinking maybe it's similar to these. That's what I drew. There's like a bond, like a circle over here, like a yin yang thing. I don't know. But then with two chakras, like the last sat shallogram kind of thing going on, maybe. Let's see, does the opposite side. Like a chakra here. Chakra here, maybe. With Australia as the system between that is now breaking off. Those kind of have two chakras. They're a little off center, which maybe even is the case in chakras, just as it was in the shallogram. Different ammonites that we saw in the last one. And regularly, I don't know if I ever really looked to see if they actually point exactly at each other when there's no system between them to have like an opinion. Like, a lot of times they're like this with something between them. But a lot of times they're like this. It's hard to say in that one. It's hard to say in that one. Because they're not sharp enough. 
They certainly look like above each other, it's just not clear that they're actually pointing at each other from another angle. Need some sharp ones. It's okay. So that's a big ammonite. Like this. This way, out this way. It's got that, that, that. Just makes me think of like these kinds of things, maybe. I mean, they're certainly connected. They look like if they're not pointing exactly at each other, it's real close. But on this scale, maybe it's detectable enough for them like that. Do they not point at each other? Like right here versus right here? I mean, that looks like it would be detectable regardless on a small scale or large. Maybe it's more out here. So the center is more even closer. Okay, there's so there's that, and then one other thing from this post. Here's the mantle puncture hole. Here is the secondary mantle puncture hole. For some reason. When I use the 2D map of the magnetic anomaly and then connect a line from them, they go to here. This is what I found of interest. They go to this point, as well as through the Mariana Trench, but this point is like a deflection point. That made me almost feel like they were energetically interacting at that point in some way. Some balance that led to them balancing out with like the structure being between them, but it's in two dimensions between them. It's not actually between them. If I go from here to over here, at least somewhere I can go over there, <laughs> that's part of the problem. I, I did this, I found a way to do this without having to go the other way on the earth. Like this is the, clo the closer path between them is this way, which is also interesting, it's kind of... reminiscent of the current path that was taken, like imagine North America is over here, then current flows in the top of North America and goes across it and fills in this region first without going below it. 
think it goes across it here and then goes around it, this mantle puncture, secondary mantle puncture hole as things start to happen. But uh, kind of looks like the path the current would have initially taken before pressure built up. And like this current came down and pushed the current down and over to go more like wobbly. So it goes down and then up a bit and then down and so but but more like along this path down up down along the west eastern boundary of north america and then around and then over like that even going into australia probably like over this way into australia and then into there kind of thing to assist the process with the with the ammonite structure over here. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. Uh, I got lots to add, but I'll save that for another one. See you guys then. Later.